Hi again everyone, Mahmoud here from the Greenhouse Gas Reporting Program. In this video, I will be demonstrating how you can use the ECCC and Partners GHG reporting module in SWIM to report your pulp and paper expanded emissions data to Environment and Climate Change Canada. Please make sure that you watch my previous general expanded video as it touches upon the fuel combustion and on-site transportation screens which are both required to complete your expanded reporting requirements for the pulp and paper production activity. So let's get started. The pulp and paper production screen will be available if you have selected the pulp and paper production activity from the facility activities screen. In addition to providing fuel combustion and on-site transportation information, you also need to provide specific information relating to the pulp and paper production activity at your facility. So from this screen, you can fulfill reporting requirements in Schedule 17 of the notice. Please keep in mind that the system will log you out after 20 minutes of inactivity. So please make sure that you constantly save your data so that no data entered is lost. It's always best to have all your information on hand while filling in your reports. So the pulp and paper production screen is split up into four main sections. Carbonate use, emissions from wastewater, production data, and additional information. For carbonate use, the information required depends on the methodology used to calculate emissions. So here's an example of how you can fill in this section. Clicking on the add icon under input carbon content method, equation 12.2, output carbon content method, equation 12.2, or input emissions factor method, equation 12.3, will display the following screen. So from here, you can report the quantity in tons and carbon content of carbonate by type. So let's go ahead and fill in this information. Here is a quick example. And now you can click on save once all relevant data is entered to return to the pulp and paper production screen. You can also click on the NA checkbox if something does not apply to your facility. And you may then enter emissions related to wastewater as well as production information. So for any additional information related to pulp and paper production that is not captured elsewhere, there is a file upload option under additional information. So you can upload a file by clicking on the add icon as shown, and then choosing your file and clicking on OK. So for this example, we're just going to click on cancel. And then once all information entered for pulp and paper production is complete, please click, click on validate to check for errors. And if there are no issues or missing information, a green check mark will be available right next to the pulp and paper production activity on the left hand menu. So from here, please click on save continue. Next are the general reporting requirements screen, sections A, B, and C. So once you have completed your expanded screens for pulp and paper production, the load activity emissions into sections A, B, and C button will appear at the top of section A as shown now. Please select load activity emissions into section A, B, and C to load information entered from the expanded screens into section A, B, and C of the report. This will ensure that emission totals in section A, B, and C 
correspond to the information entered for the activity selected. This is an expected outcome. If for a particular reason a change in the total is required, it is highly recommended that the load activity emissions into sections A, B, and C option is still used and then the specific emission totals are adjusted as necessary. So from here, let's go ahead and click on this option and click on yes. So now the data entered from my expanded screens are now filled in into sections A, B, and C of the report. So please complete the remaining screens for comments and confidentiality requests. Where emission totals have been adjusted from what was initially loaded from the activity screens, please include comments in your report to explain why this was the case. After that is complete, you will be able to submit your report. If you require additional guidance on how to complete the remaining screens, please follow the guidance given in the general reporting requirements video as you will be required to follow the exact same steps in order to submit your report. This concludes the demonstration video for the pulp and paper expanded screen. Thank you all for watching.